I think it's fair to say that space has been in the doldrums for some time. But this year, as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Apollo landings, space is really back in the headlines. It's an exciting time, and certainly at the Paris Air Show, there was so much happening within space. Well, I'm with two of the people that are there from the capital of the space industry, Houston, who can tell me where we are now and where we're going. I'm going to start with Tim as a former commander of the International Space Station. You must be pleased to see space back in the agenda. No, I, I am very excited about what's going on in space. You know, I, I think I would take issue with the doldrums part because all of us that were actually living in space and working in space, we saw it as the most exciting thing. The difference now, though, is the general public has really started to get the enthusiasm that all of us have had since we were little kids and have worked towards this goal of becoming astronauts and working in the space community. But it is a very exciting time, and I think a lot of that stems from uh, social media, multimedia, the commercial spaceflight companies that are, are touting their own capabilities. So I'm excited that all these companies, all of us will rise as a consequence. And, and you're talking about that there, space tourism really, yeah. commercialization of it. I mean, do you think it's great that we're going to be, the common man can do all the stuff you trained for years to be able to do? So what we're actually going to do first is what the United States did in 1961-62. Because we're going up for about four minutes of zero gravity, get an experience of looking out a window and seeing the curvature of the Earth. A little bit different than living in space what we do now. So that next evolution of actually living in space is a very, very high bar. So we'll see what happens there in the commercial world. Yeah, I think that one's going to be a tough one. Yeah. Atiara, welcome to the program. Thank now, you're there as heading the uh, Houston Spaceport. Now, that's where businesses are coming together to take us to that next stage in space. What are you doing? That is correct, Alan. Well, in 2015, we became the 10th commercial spaceport in the nation, and that was a very bold move by Houston. Mm. The idea is, again, to help in the transition from the federal program to a commercial program now. We have uh, been making tremendous progress. In fact, uh, we just announced uh, uh, that a, a lunar lander that is being built by one company selected by NASA is building that lunar lander at the Houston spaceport. Uh, they, they, that first mission is scheduled for July of 2021, and so we couldn't be more excited. Uh, the opportunity that this uh, venture is bringing for the area is just tremendous. Uh, we see commerce happening you know, uh, around all areas of uh, commercial space flight, right? And we definitely want to make sure that Houston is there to take advantage and, of course, keeping the, the title of uh, Space City USA. Okay, so, so Tim, the value of, of space and the knowledge we get to it, you, you're no longer sitting up there looking down on us and back down with the rest of us mere mortals. So what do you do now? How do you apply it, what's happened in space to bring it into the real world? Yeah, so I've recently changed careers pretty drastically, I think, if you look at it from the outside perspective, because I work with a venture fund, partner in a fund called Blue Bear Capital, and what we do is we invest in data-driven technology companies within the energy supply chain. But from a personal standpoint, it feels very familiar. We take complex technology, we find the best way to implement it, the best small teams that we can help to build and grow. Sounds a whole lot like my experience at NASA, but the thing that's really interesting to me is watching this, this new intersection between different industries. So space is actually very connected to energy at this point, looking at the data and the analytics that comes from sensors that help us identify methane leaks, looking at the activity of, of uh, things on planet Earth. All these things are becoming more and more interconnected as technology advances. So I think it's fair to say, Houston, we have no problems. 